Hi, welcome to Rose Opal Knits, our knitting and other crafts podcast. This is episode 44 and I'm Daphne. And I'm Erica and she's my daughter-in-law and I'm her mother-in-law. So hey, how you doing? Welcome back. Um, if you're returning, uh, we're so grateful that you're here and you like, you know, hanging out with us <laughs> so much that you will you come again and again. And if you're new, we hope that you stick around and you like what you see and consider subscribing. So today I only have knitting. That's all I've been doing. I uh, know, that's I all I've been doing too. Else. I mean like <laughs> between all three kids. Mm -hmm. And, and Holden going do, back to work. Yeah, Holden went back to work this week. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's been a little hectic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're back in school, so um but yeah, that's all I've been doing is knitting. <laughs> I've been feeling like cross stitching, but I just haven't. I have not wanted to do anything else because I'm like, eh, there's no point in thinking about anything else because I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah, just do what you can. <laughs> um, all right, so, oh, you know what? There will be description, no, there will be notes in the description <laughs> box below and uh, anything we talk about. Um, hopefully it makes it down there. If it doesn't, please leave a comment and uh, ask, you know, us to provide you with that information or send us an email and also I wanted to say that our holiday sweater cal started on September 2nd yeah and it runs until January 2nd yes and um, the information for that is down below and uh, we'll talk about it when we show what we cast it on <laughs> for that so we'll just go right into finish object yep all right you we only have one I have two Oh. oh, yeah, you do have two. Mm -hmm. I forgot. <laughs> I'll start. But anyway, so I finished my socks. And these are the Fiber Seed Sprout DK in the acorn colorway. I want to say pine cone because my stitch marker is pine cone. But anyways, so I had up until here done. So all I had to do was like an inch and then the toe. And then I finished the whole second sock. And it's on a US 3 with a 2x2 two two rib slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset, and then a wedge toe. But that's it. It's just vanilla. So. <laughs> and these are for you? Yeah, those oh. are for me. I had to finish these so I could start my dad's socks for his birthday, which are which is on September 29th. So, and I can't find, I have like two or three sets of size three, nine inch mm -hmm. circulars. And you can't find Only them. one. Hmm. Yeah, no, I have a bunch. Okay, no, 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 I know where one is. But I have three. Well, don't you? You have the little Chow Goo red pack, too. I do. Oh. But I have three fixed. Fixed, okay. Nine inch circulars mm -hmm. in US 3. And I can only find two. I'm bought... also missing a US 4 from my blue set. Oh, yeah, yeah, you said that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm missing needles and I cannot find them. I've mm -hmm. already looked in all my bags, though, too. I had borrowed one of your US 1 and a half, nine inch, but I gave that back. Yeah, I have all my nines. I mean, one and a half. Mm -hmm. And my one that I don't need. Hmm. And my two. Interesting. Well, I have a US 3 I'm not using right now. If you... I, I don't mean it. I oh, well. Okay. I finished those just so I could catch oh, them. Oh, okay. Sock. Okay. All right. <laughs> I have a finished pair of socks as well. So, um, the last time I talked about these, I had one done and I was here on the second one. And I said I was going to finish them by the end of summer sock camp on August 31st, and I did not. That's okay. <laughs> I finished them a couple days later, like on September 2nd or 3rd or something like that. So that is fine with me. Um, and the main color is this a, a homespun house and it's called unicorn magic yep and that's what I have left that's quite a bit yeah and then the heels I use this green from willow tree yarn and let's see it's a DK weight sock I knit it on a US 3 it's got a one by one um, cuff that I knit for 12 rounds and it's also got a wide rib to the sock that is centered on the top of the sock. And then a slip stitch heel flap. And then, I, of course, I did the gusset. 
and this has a star toe. So this pattern actually, so we are recording on Saturday, um, but when this uh, video goes up on Monday, the, this pattern, this actual rib DK weight sock pattern will be on the Rose Opal Knits website. I typed it all up and you'll be able to find it there if you're interested in knitting a wide rib sock. It, I've got it for the small, the medium, and the large. And it's basically our DK weight sock recipe with the um, numbers for the ribbing in there. And the pattern is the full pattern. It has the information for the star toe included, but on the website we also have the barn toe and the round toe, so you can insert those or your favorite toe. <laughs> <laughs> or so. even your favorite heel too. Yeah. I mean, you could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just the vanilla sock with the ribbing. Yeah. DK just so weight. it's centered. Mm -hmm. Is what it's for. So, um, that's that. What you okay. got? I have my Halloween sweater that I finished. I think I finished it on like the 5th or 6th, something like that, mm -hmm. but that's that. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. So this is it, and it is the Tecomza by Caitlin Hunter, just striped instead. So I didn't do the color work, but all the numbers are from that pattern, and then the like stripes are the color work section, like how long the color work sections would be. So I don't know what sleeve I was on. Hmm. I was over here. I was in that orange stripe. So I finished that sleeve and then I had both the sleeves done and then I had to do the body. So there wasn't much to finish. And I knit the smallest size, and this is worsted weight yarn because it's um, Lions Brand Heartland. And the colors are um, Yosemite is the orange, Grand Canyon is the tan, and then Black Canyon is the black. And I knit it on a US nine for the ribbing and okay so the ribbing here and on the other sleeve and then the collar but the bottom ribbing was done on a 10 and then the body of the sweater is done on a 10 and a half so <laughs> and i did and you haven't woven in your injury. no I, I started to <laughs> and then something happened and i stopped hmm. and i never went back to it that day i don't remember hmm. but I did have to stop doing the increases, so I skipped the last increase round because if I did it, it was going to be like a poncho. Mm -hmm. That's right. You had to modify the yoke yes. length. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, not by much, just the last increase round was taken out. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it was to pattern. Not the same needle size or yarn or anything like that, but yeah, small size, US 10 mm -hmm. and a half. I like it. I, I should, like it. I should try it on because you knit it big it enough. It is huge. You knit actually. it big enough, it would fit me. So Whatever. All of my oversized sweaters are like oversized. And I'll even buy them that way too. <laughs> like, okay, I wear a small medium. I don't buy small mediums. I buy a large, extra large. I was going to say, I wear large, extra large, depending on how much, you know, extra space I want. So Yeah. Most brands I wear a small medium. But mm -hmm. I do make my stuff in the large extra large size. I need this sweater. That's it's pretty. <laughs> it's not expensive to me. <laughs> I'm not saying you need to give me this one because I wouldn't do the wide arms. I'd have yeah, the tighter arms. But well, I don't, the pattern actually doesn't have decreases in the arm either. I'd have to put them in. Yeah. I, I usually, well, you'd have to just be careful yeah. with the pattern because mm -hmm. it is actually color work. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I kind of like the way you striped it. It kind of makes me think of the chocolate candy corn. Yeah, yeah. I think you said that last time. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it's not. This one's not yellow enough for it, but mm -hmm. no. But I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's my Halloween sweater. I like it. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna pause this right now, real quick. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this is my second finished object. It's in this bag, and. I had it started. I forgot to put the marker back on it after I blocked it, but it is the ends are sewn in and it was washed and blocked. And then after I took it off the blocking mat, I realized I made a mistake. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the Arise hat in the child size. And this is a pattern that I designed and it was released with the Arise cow on Monday. 
like a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they are free on the Rose Opal Knits website under the free patterns tab. And this is a child size because I knit it for my daughter. And when I took it off the blocking mat, I realized I had missed a slip stitch there. So it has a small mistake in it, but Mary Rose won't care because I'm not ripping it out. I think it's fine. She also won't know. It'll keep her head warm still, even though there's a little mistake. So yeah, when you hold it. Okay. So I used ow. <laughs> Knit Pick Swish DK in the cobblestone heather colorway. Oh, I thought this was ash. I don't know why I thought it was ash. Anyway, <laughs> it's cobblestone heather. And then I used this, which is a fingering weight. It's fiber spates, but it's their fingering weight. I don't have the tag anymore, but I know that the color is mixed magentas. And I just held them double to get the DK weight um, gauge. And I, per the, the gauge and the pattern, knit the brim of the hat on a US 5, and then the body of the hat on a US 6, and striped in the colors. That's the beginning of round right back there. And did this little slip stitch texture pattern in the front so that's it all right do you have another finished object no no all right i do have a hat though that i picked up finally oh okay well we can go right into uh whips works in progress and you can talk about your hat okay so i have the start of a muscle burrow however you say it yeah Close i think enough. i think that's a lot of people call it muscle burg which you know, here in the States, you know, we got Pittsburgh, <laughs> we got other Bergs, but I believe that the pattern is written to be pronounced Muscle Burrow. So I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyways, uh -huh. I'm sure everyone's heard of the pattern anyways. Yeah. Uh -huh. But anyways, so it's just staying in my little Harry Potter cake cozy kind of thing for Holden because it's Hufflepuff. But anyways, the yarn is Apple Fiber Studi. Studio in the color Buzz. It says B Z Z Z Z. But Holden picked it up from our local yarn store for me. It is his hat too. And I put this down a while ago. I don't even know when I showed it last. Mm -hmm. But I put it down because I wasn't sure if it was going to fit. But I finally checked my gauge compared to the sock head hat, which is the fit I wanted for him because I read the pattern and I didn't really understand how you find out. How many increase rounds you should do to fit the size you wanted it. So I just used the US 3. I'm using my bamboo clovers for this. But I used the same gauge that I had for the sock head to make sure it would fit. And I finally compared gauge from that to this and it actually worked. So, But that's his hat so far. I haven't knit it much since I picked it back up. Did you think and the cast on was fiddly? Yes. Oh, you did? Okay, okay, you have to do it on double points. Mm hmm. Uh, and yep. I knew I, that. it's like too fiddly for me to do that. I heard, yeah, I heard, uh, I've heard more people say the cast on was fiddly than not, but then I've heard a couple people say I mean, it wasn't bad. It's not too bad, mm -hmm. but like I don't work with double points like that in mm -hmm. such a small little amount. Mm hmm. So it was, it was, but. Like, once you start going, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. But the yarn is actually 20% uh, super fine alpaca, 60% merino, and 20% nylon. And I didn't want to use it for socks. Mary Rose is screaming at Ralph. <laughs> but that's right. my hat. Okay. What do I want to talk about? <laughs> oh, I'll talk about these, because it's kind of like, it has finished pieces, but it's not completely finished. <laughs> so at the beginning of the year, I created a Make Nine gift grid, and on my Make Nine gift grid, I put this piece of paper that says <laughs> 20 dishcloths. And so, the last time I showed my dishcloths, they're being kept, or the yarns for the dishcloths are being kept in this um, Noble Character Crafts bag, um, I showed dishcloths five, four and five, I think. Um, but, and then the start of dishcloth six, 
which I picked up and finished this last week, and then started and finished Dishcloth 7. And now I have the start of Dishcloth 8. And he keeps shaking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this I am using is Dishy in the Kanai Kanai colorway. K E N A I. I think I spelled <laughs> it last time too because I wasn't sure. So I don't have a whole lot left. I think I'll be able to finish. I might be able to finish this third one. And then have a little bit to start another one. I'm not sure. We'll see. <laughs> but I am doing the Grandma Grandma's second favorite dishcloth by PJ Allen, the no holes version. And I am using a US 8. Oops. A US 8. And I'm going up to 40, 42 stitches, I think. And then decreasing down because it's, it's corner to corner. The house is active beneath us because we are in my bedroom right now. But yeah, so it starts here and then it gets wider and then it decreases. But So those are my dishcloths. I, th I guess I need to um, <laughs> pause this. Okay, so I'm going to talk about my half object that I totally forgot about. <laughs> but this is in my Molly Klein Designs bag. That's Mason's little marble bag. But anyways, so I have a sock. It is the Magic Heel Sock by Audrey Judy. Corn, Jewel. Mm -hmm. But I, I forgot her name. I knew it was Judy, but uh -huh. I didn't know. But anyways, so this is the yarn. Here it is. And this yarn is Willow Tree's um, Seafair. Mm -hmm. I don't have the tag anymore because this is not the first time I've used it. I knit Mason a sock head hat out of this and now I'm knitting him matching socks. Mm -hmm. So the socks are knitting up completely different than the hat. The hat looks like stripes more and this is just like... Variegated yarn? Yeah, variegated. Oh, I couldn't like, think of what it was. They look like micro stripes a little bit. Kind of, but not really. So I don't know. But anyway, so this yarn is fun to knit with though, because it's like the different circumferences, you get a completely different look to the sock, but it's the same colors. And he's already tried them on. They do fit him. Mm -hmm. um, I gave him this one and he told me more, <laughs> held up two, and pointed to both his feet. <laughs> so, that's pretty cute. Mm -hmm. But okay, he doesn't talk very much. So when he says stuff and like says stuff clearly, it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he knew exactly that he needed two socks and asked for another one, pretty mm -hmm. impressive for him. <laughs> but yeah, so the, these I knit on a US 1.5. So, and I did the... Round toe? Yes, mm -hmm. I was trying to think of it. And I stopped it short, so it's like 16 stitches and on, then and then I kitchenered it. Mm -hmm. And I think I did the... I think I cast on 56. Yes. Mm -hmm. I cast on 56 and did um, 10 one by one rib. So, so that's it. And then the rest of it is just vanilla. Mm -hmm. I just realized our neighbor started mowing their grass. <laughs> but that's It okay. might be a noisy podcast today. Yeah, this is real life. And this is, <laughs> this is the time we have to podcast, so we're just going to keep going with it. Do you have anything else? Or is it just your oh, sweater? Oh, yeah. No, I got two things. Okay. Because I just have my two Christmas sweaters after that. Okay. Small holiday sweaters. In this old craft bag from AC Moore, I have my Doreco. And I'm knitting every day on this now. For the last 10 days, I've knit three rounds a day. So, here it is. I can't see. Can you hold it? Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, I can okay. hold it while you talk. Yeah, so hold it up a little higher. There it is. So here's my marker. This is from um, uh, Tracy of Grizzly Knits from her shop. And that's how much I've done since the last time I've shown it. So about this, I, like I said, it's the Doreco, and I believe the designer's name is Allison Green. And it, but it's a pattern for Barocco 
written specifically for this Barocco Remix light. And I have made some changes to the pattern, not, um, not big changes. So I cast it on for the 46, the 46 size, because the pattern's intended to be worn with, does it say? I think it does. one to four inches of ease. So I cast it on the 46, because my, my bust is a 44, and the size below the 46 is a 43. So I didn't want negative ease. So I cast it on for the 46, and then I tried it on as I knit, and I ended up needing to take out one of these um, little sections here because the yoke was getting too long for this area. So I didn't take out an increase. I did the increases as they were written, but between this increase and this increase, there were supposed to be two of these sections, two pearl, you know, ridge sections, and there's only one. So th then I knit the, so it switches from a circular yoke to a raglan increase here and I did that and I split from my sleeves and then I think I mentioned this in the last episode um, I decided to add some increases under both armpits <laughs> here and I did I don't think you can see it but I added them Let me see, let me look at my notes. My stick is here. I could have kept holding it. That's all right. Um, it's right here. I did an increase round. I increased on each side of that marker under the armpit. So I knit to three stitches before the marker. I made um, one right. Then I knit to the marker, slipped the marker, knit three stitches, and then I made one left. So that was my increase round. And I did an increase round, and then I knit four straight rounds, and then I did another increase round, and I did that till I had made a total of five increase rounds. So now the body is the size for the 49 inch sweater because I kind of wanted it to like flow out a little bit, like a a line. A line, yeah. Um, and now I'm just going to knit straight down because I wanted it to be flowy, not tight at all. I didn't want it to really hug my lumps <laughs> in my, my belly lumps so or my back lumps. So, <laughs> so that's what I'm doing now. And um, I don't know when I'll have it finished, but I should have it finished by the end of October. It's the she says so, and now she won't. <laughs> Okay, she'll like stop working on it. I'm knitting three rounds every day. That will eventually <laughs> get it finished. Yeah, I still caught up. I'm still like on track to finish a sweater every month. <laughs> well, but I technically finished. That's amazing. And you were you and I am me. <laughs> on, in September. So it counts as a September sweater. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. All right, so. There it is. I have another sock. This is my dad's sock. So this is a DK weight. Wait. What? I thought you said you only had two sweaters. Oh, and socks. You didn't. I said I have socks. one more and two sweaters. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those are the sweaters for the make along. Though. All right, all right. Anyway, so I have another sock. It's my dad's sock, and I cast it on fifty six because it's DK. But anyway, so I cast it on fifty six. Did a two by two rib for twelve or fourteen rounds. And then it's just going to be vanilla with a slip stitch heel and then a wedge toe when I get there. But, I'm going to hold that. Mm -hmm. I have three yarns, actually. So, the main color, I forget the brand, but this is Rubius Hagrid. And the brand will be in the description box below. And then this is Coop's Knit Socks, yeah. I don't remember the color either. It's the same green in my Bright Feather and the... I think it's Adventurine. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. There you go. Anyway, so these are held double for the cuff and the heel. So, and then for the rest of the sock, I have this coop knit sock. Yeah, I forget the order. Sock, yeah, coop knit. In the, how would you say that? Chalcedony, Chalcedony, I forget how to pronounce it. <laughs> but yeah, so this is held throughout the sock and then the heel and cuff and the toe are gonna be with the green. The body is with the gray. So, because the Haggard yarn has like pink in it, there's a little bit right there, but I didn't want to knit this and make it, like, have it feel like a girl sock, because they're for my dad. So I kind of use the contrast colors to Tone block down out pink. the pink a mm-hmm. little bit. You can still see it, but... It, yeah, it's, it's not, like, screaming pink, though. And I no. felt like when mm-hmm. I started knitting Holden's hat the first time, and it, it was screaming pink. Mm-hmm. So for a guy, I felt like... It needed to be mm-hmm. muted. Mm-hmm. But you can see the browns really nice, which I like. So mm-hmm. I think they look pretty like held it. together. Mm-hmm. And that's in my You Got a Bag. It's on that too. It's E W E, though, for You Got a Bag. All right. And now we have sweaters. Yep. So. Like we said in the beginning, uh, we started our holiday sweater cow. And um, you can join us by um, posting your knits on Instagram with a hashtag that'll go across the screen right now, um, or in our Facebook group, uh, Rose Oval Knits Facebook group, which I'm really sorry. I feel like we neglected that. Um, but I did just download the app on my Kindle. So I should be better at checking Facebook because I, I hardly ever look at Facebook, but I, I like get, all I, my notifications get like covered. Like mm-hmm. I get so many Facebook notifications mm-hmm. it's getting crazy though. Cause I kept getting like between like five and 10 a day Oh wow! about people like, Oh, so-and-so just added a picture or mm-hmm. added a post. And I'm like, okay, I'll look That's... at Facebook when I want to look at Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, see notifications for like anything else so Mm -hmm. but yeah everything just gets covered I like yeah I like having the Facebook group there and Mm -hmm. um and I'm glad that you know there's other people that want to join us in Facebook but we've talked about it before you know like I definitely try to separate my social media time out through the day or through the week even sometimes but okay I sweater make along yeah so, I started mine. We both started ours, okay. You started yours and Holden's. I just started mine, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, here it is. Um, right here. Just into the color very, work. Very Christmassy. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> and I had, I think I said in the last episode that I was trying to decide between three sweaters in the uh, Strange Brew book, and I totally ditched that plan and um and I went another route and I'm so happy that I did so I had shown this book before on the podcast I think I showed it last year so in this book is this sweater that I'm not gonna pronounce correctly I'm sure Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. It's just going to roll across the screen. <laughs> but there it is. And it's so pretty. Here, let me show another picture. <laughs> so. All right. So this sweater is knit with five The yoke of this sweater has five colors in it. And I'm only using three different colors. So I had to rework some of the color work section. Where is my sweater? In your bag. Oh. This is my bag. It's a Molly (laughs) Klein design bag. (laughs) Um so I had to work some of the, the color rework. I mean you doing knitting the color work as charted. I just have to use the colors differently because instead of five colors, I only have three. 
so that's where I am and it's all oh sorry it's all Barocco Barocco ultra wool DK and this is the sour cherry colorway all the color numbers will be in the description box is that Mason yes. uh -huh. and then this one is called pine and then this one I forget what this one's called but it's in the description box and so I started the sweater with the pine and then worked in the sour cherry and now I just started working in the um, off-white probably ivory yeah that sounds about right or snow something like that yeah. um the bands don't actually have like the color names on them they just, just have the, the color number mm -hmm. um but i'm so I'm, then i'm gonna finish working the color work and then the body the main body of the sweater and the rest of the sleeves will be this color because i have four balls of this and i only have one ball of each of these so but I'm really excited about it and it's so fun. I forgot, it's been so long since I've knit color work. I forgot like how, that's how I feel. Like how soothing I find the rhythm of color work. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. That's, okay, well, that's all I got. I don't have the tag for this yarn, but I do, it's just there with me. But anyways, so this is the start of my Alaska sweater. I forget who's about to. Look, I'm not good at this today, apparently. <laughs> but anyway, so the yarn, this is what I'm working with right now. But anyways, it's Hobby Lobby's Yarn V Soft and Sleek DK. And this color is ivory. And then, so the bottom of it has a tree line in it and it's like pine trees. So that is gonna be in the color cedar. Same yarn though. But I don't even remember what size I'm knitting either. But, so, this is going to be my Thanksgiving sweater, actually. The, my Christmas sweater is going to be a fall dot now that I have not started yet. But, so, I'm already halfway done with the increases for the raglan. And then, you have to go back and pick up the collar after. So, so the, like, it's worked flat at first for the, like, short rows, kind of. And then, you join it and then just do the raglan increases and then go back to do the collar later. And I'll tell you my needle size, actually. I'm only holding this single, actually, because I got gauge. It's the same gauge that I had with the outline tee by Jessie May. It's on a US 7. I should have known that. Mm -hmm. But, so it's the same gauge as that. And I only needed one strand to get that gauge. So, But it is more like a fingering weight yarn. Mm -hmm. so. I forgot to mention my needles for my um, sweater. Go back to it real quick. Mine oh, I can. I know what it is. Uh. stitch cloth or bag. It's right. a US 6 for the collar and the cuffs, a US 7 for the body of the sweater, and a US 8 for the color work section. So. Alright, and then in my bag that I sewed, mm -hmm. it's the first one that got completed. It's not super great, but it's okay. <laughs> it's Holden's sweater. So this is the So Basic. Again, I forget who it's by. And I'm using a US 8 and a US 7 for the ribbing. Here, you want to hold that? Mm -hmm. And this yarn is Barocco, Barocco Ultra Fine Wool. And I don't know the color, it's just the number that I have. It's stone washed, I think. Okay. But mine's fingering weight, so. Mm -hmm. And this pattern is uh, just like a vanilla sweater, other than the sleeves. The sleeves are actually a really wide rib. Did you call it a vanilla sweater? Yes. It's stuck in that stitch. <laughs> it's a vanilla sweater too, okay, whatever. Same thing. It is. I know. I know. Like, why is she not making fun of me? I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm only like a quarter of the oh. way done with his raglan. Wait, wait, wait. Does this is this sweater supposed to have a pocket on the front? Yeah. Are you doing the pocket? He said no pocket. Okay, that's so funny. I just saw this sweater on um, Sugar Folk Homemade. She's knitting one for her, or she's gonna knit one for her husband, and he doesn't want the sweater either. Is it Max? With the he Maxim? doesn't want the pocket. Yeah, he doesn't want yes. to, uh, Maxim CYR. Something so, like so that. I, think, yeah, yes. I don't know how to pronounce his last You're the, name. You were there when I chose the sweater. I know, remember? but I don't remember. <laughs> but I am knitting the extra large size. And I like that. I don't even know. Like this gauge, I, I'm using a size 8, US 8, on a fingering weight sweater. Mm hmm. It looks 
good. I mean, it does look, it doesn't look snug, but it, it doesn't look too loose either. But then with the six, it was real snug. Yeah. And I was not even close to gauge. Mm -hmm. So I like it. I don't know, but yeah, that's the sweater so far. Like I said, I'm only a quarter of the way done. It's so juggling. Mm -hmm. If it was mine, it would be halfway done. <laughs> But that's all I have. All right. I don't have anything new. Okay, well, hold on, because we needed to talk about stuff with this. Okay, well, oh, hold on. <laughs> Are we pausing again? We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we're back. She <laughs> forgot what we were talking about. But anyways, so the rules are, because people asked us, you can knit gifts for this. Mm -hmm. And they can be any size from um, baby to adult. Mm -hmm. And when we say sweater you can knit a cardigan a pullover or like anything a knitted sleeves tea. basically yeah yes. a knitted tee so mm -hmm. you know if it's got cap sleeves short sleeves three-quarter length sleeves full sleeves yeah. if you knit it and you wear it either this way or pull it over your head you can enter it <laughs> yeah basically and gifts if you're knitting a gift if it's meant for the holidays mm -hmm. so a gift knit you plan on wearing it for a holiday or anything like that. Or your family member or friend's going to wear it for the holiday. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. That's all. Basically. I think, I think the um, other two main uh, guidelines for the Mal, because you can crochet a sweater too, um, is that it needs to be started on September 2nd or later and then finished before or by January 2nd. So even if you say you're just going to finish that sweater by January 2nd to enter, it's fine. Yeah, because you might want to wear it for Valentine's Day, and it doesn't fall within here, but if you're knitting it, that's fine with me. Is that fine with you? Okay. <laughs> Basically, if you finish a sweater Start and finish holidays, a sweater for the holidays. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically. Yep. <laughs> just no tank tops and no vests. Basically. Yeah, yeah no tank tops, no vests. Mm-hmm. So, yep. All right. All. <laughs> That's and I do have one purchase. Okay. And this is for Theo's hat. So he's going to get a sock head hat and a pair of socks. So they're, so it's Paisley, but I've already knit her hat. So this is his yarn. And it is Wonderlook Fibers in the Middle Earth color. It's so pretty. I like it a lot. Such a good green. Mm -hmm. But um, I also decided for theirs, I'm going to choose, I chose some hand dyer yeah, that um, has less than 500 people favorited their shop. Hmm. So because Support Mason's, those small businesses. Basically. Mm -hmm. Mason's was um, Willow Tree Yarn. They're all on Etsy too. Paisley's was from Paper Crane. Mm -hmm. And then this is Wonder, yeah, Wonder Luck Fibers. Mm -hmm. Wander? Wander Luck Fibers. I don't know. Yep. Wander. Wander. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. But it was really pretty, and she has really pretty yarn, too. Like, all of it is. I haven't looked at so. it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's a great purchase. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, I just wanted to say thank you to um, everyone who liked and commented and downloaded the um, Arise Cal and or hat pattern. I really appreciate your, um, your support, your enthusiasm <laughs> for it. It was um, a lot of work, and I will say this. Pattern designers, paying for a pattern is worth every penny because it is, <laughs> it is work. And it's um, something that I, I find fun, like as a creative outlet, but um, it was a bit stressful, <laughs> stressful for me, you know, the worry of uh, writing the pattern well enough so that other people could, um, could knit the item as well, because I've, written up plenty patterns for myself but you know it's a whole reading nother something that you wrote isn't the same as reading something someone else wrote though, mm -hmm. so. yeah so you know it's just um but you know but so it's done <laughs> and I, I feel a sigh of relief that they're out in the world now and um, I'm enjoying knitting other people's <laughs> patterns <laughs> all right so I think that's it um yeah. We oh we had our second Zoom meeting since our last podcast right yeah 
It was a lot of fun, and um, if you were there, we were so happy to get to uh, know you better and um, chat with you. And we are going to do more Zooms in the future, but um, the next couple weeks, the next, well. It's like a month. Yeah. The next month for us is pretty busy. <laughs> so we probably won't be able to fit one in until after that second week of October. Yeah. Right? Probably. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got birthdays. <laughs> We've got birthdays, bridal showers, weddings. Well, we only got one bridal shower and one wedding. Um, I have three birthdays. Yeah. Because it's my dad's birthday, my birthday, Mary Rose's birthday, mm -hmm. your guys' anniversary. Yeah. Mine's at the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. And then the wedding's the beginning of the month, and the bridal shower's the end of September, so... Yeah, so we, we are pretty booked out, um, especially our weekends are very yeah. full, um, but we've got family coming in town for the wedding. My husband and I um, are hoping to get away uh, for a couple days for our anniversary, um, so we will look at the calendar and we will schedule some more Zoom um, meetups, but it will probably won't be for another month, but... We hope that, you know, there are those of you that are looking forward to joining us again because we had lots of fun. But anything else? I'm sure there's something. But <laughs> it is. We'll say it. Yeah. Again. Yeah. All right. So thanks for joining us. And um, if you've stuck around this long, we appreciate it. And uh, we will see you in two weeks. Oh, look for my yarn stash. Um, September extra video. That'll be coming up too. Yep. Yeah. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's All it. right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.